by recognizing Jerusalem and moving our embassy there, uh, our country is saying what we know from history and the Bible, that Jerusalem has actually been the capital of Jerusalem for 3,000, or capital of Israel, of Israel for 3,000 years. And here's why that is so significant. That historical truth that Jerusalem has been the capital for 3,000 years absolutely explodes the myth that comes from the left that somehow the Jewish people just came into that land 70 years ago and they took it away from the Palestinians and that the Jews have no rightful claim to it. The Bible says and history confirms that God gave that land to the Jewish people and I believe as Genesis 12 says God blesses those countries that bless Israel and he curses those countries countries that curse Israel. I believe President Trump and the United States are not only on the right side of history in this decision, they're on the right side of God. And here it is, the Balfour Declaration. What do you feel when you, when you see it here? I genuinely feel it's one of the most extraordinary moments in the history of the Jewish people. If you think it took 3,000 years uh, to get to this. And then you say, how did this miracle happen? It's the most incredible piece of opportunism. I mean, if you think you had an impoverished uh, would-be scientist, Heim Weizmann, who somehow gets to England, meets a few people, including members of my family, seduces them, he has such great charm and conviction. He gets to Balfour, and he unbelievably persuades Balfour and Lloyd George, the Prime Minister, and most of the ministers, that this idea of um, the national home for um, Jews should be allowed to take place. I mean, it's so, so unlikely. You come back to the big point, which is that this is perhaps the greatest event in Jewish life for thousands of years. And um, it's a miracle that it took place. Hello and welcome everybody to a new video from Jörg, Jogra 66, Hour of the Truth, once again in collaboration with my wonderful brother in Christ, Tom Fress from Inquisition Update, all over on the other side of the ocean, <laughs> the other side of the world, uh, if you believe um, that we are on a globe, but we are not going into that discussion, we have a much more interesting and important discussion, and that is the discussion of Exploding the Israel Deception, a book Steve Wolberg wrote, I think, if I'm not mistaken, in 1998, for the very first time, that's the edition of the book that I have here in PDF, uh, we have come to the seventh chapter when the wall came tumbling down last week in our reading and discussion. Uh, we finished more or less with the citation of um, uh, the King James Bible's book of Acts, chapter 15, um, which was uh, very clear to, uh, well, make sure that we understand that the wall that Jesus tear down was the wall between the quote-unquote Jews and quote-unquote Gentiles. And uh, how that is going to continue, Tom and I will show you tonight with our next reading, the 88th part of the study. And so let me first welcome Brother Tom Fress to the broadcast today. Hello, Tom. Yes, uh, hello, you're very, very happy to be here. And uh, I love what you said there, the, that the that uh, the Lord broke down the wall of separation between the Jew and the Gentile. Now we are joint heirs with Christ and joint heirs with the Israelites, those who accept Jesus, their Messiah. And uh, there's no difference between us. We are now Hebrews or Israelites by adoption. Okay. So uh, there are no two Jews, there's but one. And God broke down the wall of separation between us. So Israel... In 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 the in in the uh, of the context of this discussion, Israel is both Jew and Gentile, and so uh, we're all one in Christ Jesus. That's what the Scripture teaches. 
And so uh, there's no room, I will add. There's no room among us. There's no space among us for uh, Jew bashing or anti-Semitism. We are all one in Christ Jesus, uh, both Jew and Greek, Jew and Gentile. And uh, so uh, in the proper discussion, there's no Jew or Gentile. We are all one in Christ Jesus. And so uh, uh, we are all Israel. And uh, that, that point's not often enough made uh, to the listeners. And that's my, as much my fault as anyone else's. So uh, that's a, a point well made. We don't talk about any, anything else today. We've already made one point that is valuable and worthy of contemplation and remembrance and uh, study, further study. Okay, thanks, Jörg. Yeah, Tom, I think um, maybe we can elaborate a little bit more on the subject because I think it is something that is too few talked about. You know, uh, it is not that Christians like you and me are against unity. The whole world is promoting unity. One, 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 let's all be one. We're all the same. Uh, we Christians are for that too. But... And that's a very, very important, but we are all one in spirit and in truth. That's the key. And that key is not talked about in this antichrist world we're living in. They no. want to make everything one without being yeah. led by the same spirit and without having the truth as their foundation. And that right. is the big difference. And I think that needs a little bit to be talked about. Uh, as long as we're on the subject, Tom, before we go into the book, why don't you elaborate a little bit on that? Because I think you had something very important things to say to that. Well, I, I, I don't know if I'm following your leader exactly or not, but look, uh, there's a vast majority. Let me use the term again so nobody misunderstands me. Don't follow my the, lead, Tom. Follow the lead <laughs> of Jesus Christ. <laughs> the, the, the vast majority of the professing Christian world are not Christians at all. Okay? The vast majority of those who profess Christianity are not Christians at all. They're not the body of Christ. They're not Israel. They're not redeemed. Uh, they are tares among the wheat. And uh, that's a hard thing to realize that when you're standing in a group of Christians, professing Christians, the vast majority of them are false. Uh, the extreme minority of the group are true Bible-believing Christians redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And uh, as I've said many times before, and I say again, anybody who calls Roman Catholicism Christianity has blasphemed the name of Christ because they don't worship the risen Christ. They don't, they don't worship the one who bought us with his blood. They worship a figment of their own imagination. And they still make sacrifice as though there's still redemption yet to be had for them. Uh, uh, the sacrifice of the mass, the Eucharist, that's proof positive. That is open, uh, visible. Uh, the champion of the Roman Catholic Church is their sacrifice called the mass. And it disqualifies them, single-handedly disqualifies anyone among them who calls himself a Christian of being a blood-bought Christian. And to call them a Christian is to blaspheme the name of Christ, is to mix the holy with the profane. Just have a look at this here, Tom, this article I just looked up. Because one of these days it came to my ears, to my understanding, that the Pope denies the physical resurrection of Christ. Yeah. Says an Italian friend, as Catholics demand, Vatican denounces the heretical claim. Yes, so, we, we've, we've talked about this before. Even John Paul II said that Jesus did not come to be the Messiah. 
But he came to show the Christ in all of us or something like that. Yes, he said he came to show the Christ in every man. Now, that is directly opposite of the gospel. You can't call yourself a Christian and say something as stupid as that, as rebellious as that is. You can't include someone who says someone like that into the body of Christ. You've, you've, you've mixed the holy with the profane. And uh, John Paul II made no bones about it. Jesus did not come to be the Messiah. Jesus came to show the Christ in every man. And, and here you, you have quoted uh, the current pope, because, that Jesus did not come to be the Messiah. And, and why, why should we believe exactly what they say? Because they are the authors of futurism, which denies that Jesus fulfilled the 70th week of Daniel, which means Jesus was not the Messiah, the prince that Daniel prophesied about. And when they tell you that Jesus was not the Messiah, Jesus did not come to, to redeem man, they mean what they say. They mean exactly what they say. There's no playing with words. They mean exactly what they say. They are Christ deniers. They have replaced Christ with the papacy. The papacy has always claimed to be sweet Christ on earth. Even his title, Vicar of Christ, means replacement of the Son of God. They have replaced the Son of God. Roman Catholicism teaches replacement theology, that the Roman Catholic Church now is the body of Christ, and it has replaced the Jews. Is that what the Scripture teaches? Obvious, obviously not. Anybody who's ever read the Scriptures knows that's ridiculous. Well, it's worse than ridiculous. It's diabolical. And it marks the Roman Catholic Church as the synagogue of Satan. It's not Christianity. It's the synagogue of Satan. And I mean precisely what I say. No mixing of words. And uh, I know people don't like to hear radical statements like this. But these, not, these are not radical. These are the truth. Okay? Uh, uh, this, this, this church that calls itself Christian is a blaspheming church. The Bible plainly says, full of the names of blasphemy. You know? And that's what it is. It blasphemes the name of Christ every time they call themselves Christians. Who would ever look at the Roman Catholic Church and who knows anything about the Bible and what it says? Who would ever look at anything in the Roman Catholic Church and say, this is, this is Christianity? It's, it's not. It's clearly not. And uh, uh, I don't miss, I know it makes people nervous, especially in mixed company. But I make no bones about it in whatever crowd I'm in. Roman Catholicism is by no stretch of the imagination anything close to Christianity. And, and no, more, no more Christianity than is Buddhism or Hinduism or, or Muslim, Islam, or any other cult. But worse than that, there's a specific designation for the Roman Catholic Church denounced over and over in the Bible. It is the subject of Bible prophecy. The Roman Catholic Church is repeatedly referred to in a negative sense in the Bible. The beast, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, the one who betrays Christ with a kiss, the Judas priest, the woman, the whore, the rise of scarlet colored beast, they're all descriptions of the Roman Catholic Church. You can't pass any of those descriptions off to anyone else but the Roman Catholic Church and its papacy. And uh, there, it's, it's, just, it's just infinitely beyond denial what the Roman Catholic Church is. And of course, <laughs> You know, if you're looking for a future Antichrist, none of, nothing that I say is going to make sense to you. You've believed a lie, and, and you're going to continue to believe that lie unless God rescues you from that lie, unless God grants you repentance. It's a gift, okay? Now, I happen to have been fortunate enough to receive that gift from the Lord, and uh, you may pray for that gift. We're to pray for the good gifts of God. 
But uh, uh, there are many people who have been taught from cradle to grave that the Roman Catholic Church is Christianity and that the Antichrist's future is not even in the world yet. And you it's just almost impossible to help those people. It's almost impossible to help those people. But listen, we're here on Inquisition Update, and we're here on uh, Joggler 66 uh, preaching the same truth. Jesus is the fulfillment of the 70th week of Daniel. Daniel prophesied that there would be 70 prophetic weeks and that the Messiah, the Prince, would rule or, or would, would redeem us in the last week, in the 70th week. And he did, right in the middle of the week. He confirmed the covenant with many, that is, all of us for one week. And in the midst of the week, he caused the sacrifice and oblation to cease by becoming the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, brings in everlasting righteousness, does away with sin, reconciles us to God, everything. You know, who in the world could ever pass it off that the 70th week of Daniel is yet future? And yet, we've all believed it, myself included. I'm not one whit better than anybody that's listening. I believe the lie, hook, line, and sinker. I taught it all my life, and now I'm on my knees. I'm on my face in sackcloth and ash, have been for 20 years repenting before the Lord and correcting the error of my ways. Please listen and do likewise. In Jesus' name, back to you, Yerk. That is the spirit of unity that the Bible speaks about, and not the spirit of unity the Pope speaks about, Tom. Yeah. You're absolutely right. We need unity in the truth. What good is unity in a lie? Continuing in the book Exploding the Israel Deception on page 57. In the chapter, when the wall came tumbling down, the wall had come down, the last sentence or the last two sentences of the first paragraph read, it had been demolished by the cross. A number of years later, Paul wrote to believing Gentiles in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 through 16. We read, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Very important point. Huh? Circumcision made by hands. That at that time ye were, uh, ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. Just want to go back to yeah, bless the Lord. Uh, yeah. Bless the Lord. I mean, that's that's explicitly stated. And there's, there's some there's some critical points that need to be emphasized in this. First of all, it says you were at one time Gentiles. In other words, you're not a Gentile now. And I, and I have to correct my own speech. That's what the scriptures are for, to admonish us. I am never to call myself again a Gentile. Okay? That's what I used to be. But now that I'm washed in the blood of the Lamb and become a part of the commonwealth of Israel, I am now a Jew, a Hebrew. A, a, a seed of Abraham, okay? I've been grafted in. I've been adopted. No longer am I a Gentile. To call myself a Gentile, which I am in the flesh, but to call myself a Gentile now is to deny the redemption that I have in Christ. When we are in Christ, we are no more Gentile, okay? 
We are not without hope in the world. We are not without Christ. We are not without God. We're part of the commonwealth and joint heirs with Christ. How dare we continue, even in ignorance, to continue to refer to ourselves as Gentiles? And likewise, it is as much error to call a Hebrew a Jew or uh, an Israelite a Jew when he has not received Jesus, when he has denied Jesus, when he's on Temple Mount slaying pigeons and lambs and goats and bullocks and doves. He is not a Jew. He is as much a Gentile as I used to be. He is unwashed. His sacrifices will not save him, will not redeem him, will not reconcile him to God, will not make reconciliation for iniquity, will not bring in everlasting righteousness. Only the blood of Christ can do that. So all their sacrifices on Temple Mount are nothing but a testimony to their lost condition. It is an outward sign of their perdition. It is as much to reject the blood of Christ when you make your own sacrifice. And uh, that goes for Roman Catholics. That's why together I call them the synagogue of Satan. I've said this before. You know, many times I'm criticized, criticized endlessly uh, for, for but never talking about the Jews when I talk about the synagogue of Satan. You're talking about the synagogue of Satan, but you're talking about the Roman Catholic Church. You never say anything about the Jews. Well, listen, that's because everybody else talks about the Jews and never talks about the Roman Catholic Church, okay? They, they, they want you to believe Roman Catholicism Christianity. Uh-uh. That ain't going to happen here. Not ever. The Roman Catholic Church makes sacrifice just like the Christ-rejecting Jews do. And together they make the synagogue of Satan. Together they are the Gentile world. If you're washed by the blood of the Lamb, your sacrifice has been made. And you wouldn't dare make a sacrifice or you would replace the one that Jesus made for you. You would outrightly reject the sacrifice that Jesus made for you. That's why we don't make sacrifices. That's why Jesus, when after Passover was over, the sacrificial lamb was eaten, the, 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 the Passover meal was, was done, then Jesus brought out the bread and the wine and gave us a new ordinance, one that replaced the old. And we do it now in remembrance of him. There's no bloodshed. There's no lamb that is slain. There's no sacrifice that is made. We simply take the bread and the wine and we remember the sacrifice that he made. Why? Because the sacrifices and oblations are put to an end. Okay, something had to replace that lamb that they used to eat at Passover. And Jesus, knowing full well that his sacrifice put an end to all sacrifices for all men for all time, replaced the Passover meal with the communion commemoration, the communion memorial. And uh, you, you, you want to keep the feast of the Lord? Absolutely, they're holy feasts. They're never to be done away with. And Passover is now replaced with communion. But there's one, a little addition. The, the scripture plainly tells us, as often as you eat this, this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the, the Lord's uh, 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 death till he comes. So, so we don't have to keep it every Passover. We can keep it as often as we want. Okay? We have freedom on the Passover. And, of course, most of the self-professing Christian world would say, oh, Tom, you, 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 you've clearly gone too far now. We're, we're convinced now you don't know what you're talking about. Those feasts were for the Jews, uh, but, but, but they, they've never been taught that they are a Jew. They are a true Jew if they're washed in the blood of the Lamb. And those feasts are for the Jews. You and me and Yerk and everyone else who is washed in the blood of the Lamb. Those feasts are for God's people forever, forever. And uh, uh, we are deceived to believe that somehow 
the cross did away with those precious holy feasts of the Lord. They're prophetic, and uh, they should be observed by the body of Christ, just like Jesus observed them. Back to you, Yerk. Sorry to have gone off on a rant, a, ta a tangent, uh, unexpectedly, and, uh, you know, maybe I should apologize for that. But, no, uh, no, 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 uh, that's okay. I mean, <laughs> this is our broadcast, Tom. It's Inquisition yeah. Update and Hour of the Truth. It's not uh, the one with the other. It's just I'm taking the lead in the beginning because someone has to speak in the beginning, but you can do that uh, also if you, if you want to. You can do the introductory <laughs> reading next time. I have no problem with that. So this is as much my broadcast as it is yours, and it is all done in the name of the Lord. I just wanted to say when you, when you speak of the table of the Lord, uh, taking the communion, uh, we have to remind the people that we are doing that as often as we want. Uh, Catholics do that yes. too. But the problem is we do that in remembrance of him. Right. And Absolutely. they do it under the dogma, the Roman Catholic dogma of transubstantiation. Yeah, make, believing, which makes it a sacrifice. Believing yeah, that, that the priest creates Jesus Christ at that moment with flesh and blood and sen sinews, sinew sinews and, and, and bones and everything else, and that you are eating the true body of Jesus Christ. And that's not what we do, because that's why Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. And if you do that in remembrance of him, what does the Roman Catholic Church then say of you? Do, according to the Council of Trent, they say that you are anathema. You are damned. You are excommunicated. You are lawless. You are free to be killed by anyone on sight if you do that. And I found that a very interesting point that you were making uh, uh, about that. But I thought, and maybe I'm wrong here, you can correct me if I'm wrong with what I think, this last part of the sentence uh, was very interesting to me because it says, circumcision in the flesh made by hands. And then yeah. I put up this picture here of faith, this one, referring to that the Israelites of the Old Testament had their sacrifice, looking forward to the one and only sacrifice Jesus would provide, and we are looking back to that sacrifice without doing these sacrifices. That's the point that you yeah. were making. Yeah. Well, what I understand from this circumcision in the flesh made by hands, we have to understand that our salvation does not depend on our acts, but on the acts of God. There you so go. So that when in That's the it. Old Testament we did circumcision by our hands, and that quote-unquote we thought made us righteous, God wipes that away and says he is giving us a new heart, a heart right. of flesh instead of a heart of stone, and a yep. heart that he circumcised for us. Yep without anything listen, we do in listen, that. This is, this is very easy, and it'll bless your heart when it finally sinks to you, the marrow of your bones. Listen, we have to remember the days of Abraham. When the Lord commanded that Abraham should circumcise everyone in his camp. Oh, but why Abraham? because he was already circumcised of the heart. Okay? Abraham was already circumcised of the heart. His faith was and counted unto him for righteousness. His, the Bible that's says. right. His faith, he believed God. And Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. There's the circumcision. Okay? Now, whether or not Abraham had a foreskin on his penis is immaterial at this point. But what needed to be impressed upon everyone in Abraham's camp is that they too should be circumcised of the heart and to remind them constantly every day of that desirable circumcision, the one not made by hands, they were to circumcise themselves and then they were to circumcise their, their, their sons at the uh, at, at their birth, and uh, you know, cutting away the flesh. It's it's the teacher. It's it's well, isn't that what the entire Christian world is? To put down the flesh, to live in the spirit, to put down the flesh and live in the spirit. 
you know, if, if you if you if you if you walk in the spirit, you'll not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So so the cutting away of the foreskin of the penis, the most the most private member next to the heart. Do you get where I'm going? They cut away the flesh. OK, so that eventually they would comprehend that true circumcision is the cutting away of the flesh of the heart. And that you might be like Father Abraham. You believe God, and it was accounted unto you for righteousness. So if you're already circumcised in the heart, that true conversion, there's no need for circumcised of the flesh. Okay? It's redundant. I'm not saying it's wrong, it's just redundant. Now, who is circumcised of the flesh? The, the Jews, right? The Hebrews, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, most of which rejects Jesus as their Messiah. How can they possibly be circumcised of the heart? And but but on the other on the other hand, those of us who were once called Gentiles are now made uh, uh, redeemed in the blood of the Lamb and are now circumcised of the heart. What need have we? for physical circumcised, like the Jews. So there are those who are circumcised of their foreskin by the hand, by hands. And there are those of us who are circumcised of the heart, whether we still have a foreskin or not. I, I, hope, I hope that's simple enough for people to understand. But listen, it's easy to understand once you realize that circumcision as meant by God is to be walking in the spirit and not fulfilling the lust of the flesh. And it means to believe God, believe what he says. Now, I would like to add that if God said through the prophet Daniel that Jesus, Messiah the Prince, the Prince that shall come, would in the midst of the 70th and final week of Daniel's prophecy would cause the sacrifice and oblations to cease. You demonstrate that you do not believe God if you're continuing to make sacrifice and you are not circumcised of the heart. Whether you're circumcised of the flesh makes no difference. If you call God a liar and make sacrifice, you have made yourself of the uncircumcised, uh, uncircumcision, okay? And your sacrifice is a testimony against you. The blood that you shed, whether it's a bloodless sacrifice, as they say in the Roman Catholic Church, or whether it's the blood of lambs and goats on Temple Mount in Jerusalem, you have eaten and drank damnation to yourself. You have proven you don't understand Daniel's prophecy, and you're not a beneficiary of his blood and his sacrifice. Now, what about the futurists? Which I always condemn. They believe the 70th week of, of Daniel's future. In other words, Jesus was not the Messiah. Jesus did not bring in everlasting righteousness. Jesus did not make reconciliation for iniquity. Jesus was not the Messiah. They believe with that statement that the 70th week of Daniel is yet future. It has not been fulfilled in history. They're just like John Paul too, that says Jesus, Jesus did not come to be the Messiah. He came to show the Christ in every man. Now think about what some of the Pentecostal preachers have been preaching for 20 years or more. You see the similarity? That you are gods? Don't they fall in line with John Paul too? Absolutely they do. Okay, they're possessed by a spirit, but it's not the Holy Spirit, I'm here to tell you. Okay? I don't care how many signs and wonders they make. I don't care how much unintelligible gibberish they utter. They are not full of the Holy Ghost. They're, whole, they're full of something, but it's not the Holy Ghost. And you have the current Pope saying essentially the same thing. A Jesuit priest 
saying the same thing. They deny Jesus was the 70th week of Daniel fulfillment. They believe in a future fulfillment and another Christ and another Antichrist. They've confused and confounded the entire Christian world. And I used to be one of them. God help me. God forgive me. I repent. I was led into error by the most trusted people in my life, by the most beloved people in my life, I was led into error. And now that I believe the truth, I'm rejected by all of them. I've, I've fallen into some kind of a religious cult, according to them. But listen, when somebody tells you the truth straight from the scriptures, it, the truth has a ring to it that cannot be silenced. It resonates within the marrow of your bones. And many listeners who listen to Inquisition Update and listen to me wherever I am, they, re they feel that resonance, that, that, tr that, that true statement that Jesus fulfilled the 70th week of Daniel 2,000 years ago. There is no 2,000-year gap. And not only that, but the Antichrist, the real, true, biblical, historical, and prophetic Antichrist was soon to be revealed to the world, and he was. Right after the Caesars were taken out of the way, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the little horn of Daniel, they were revealed in the papacy. And the papacy has ruled and reigned over the kings of the earth ever since and pursued and killed the saints of Almighty God. He is drunk with the blood of the saints and the martyrs of Jesus. You have the fulfillment of these scriptures and you cannot deny it. When the truth hits you, it resonates like a bell. And no one will be ever, 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 ever able to lie to you again. Now, thank the Lord for his abundant mercy. He calls and he chooses whomever he pleases. And if he has called you into this truth, you have assurance of your salvation. Back to you, Yerk. I think, Tom, with that wonderful explanation that you just gave in length that was needed, it is interesting to read these verses of Ephesians chapter 2 once again with the understanding the viewer now has with well, please. what you explained. Absolutely. Wherefore, remember that ye, being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, and let me uh, add to this, in spirit and in truth, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. Here. Now, if you want a blessing directly from the Lord, take that passage that Yerk just read and compare it with Daniel's prophecy, and you'll find the peace and the harmony that you've always lacked in your Christian life. And you'll know for a certainty, Jesus was the fulfillment of the 70th and final week of Daniel's prophecy. Messiah has come. The kingdom is ours. His blood washed us of all of our sins. No more sins. And uh, uh, we're now reconciled with God. Daniel's prophecy is fulfilled in Jesus and him alone. And what he did 2,000 years ago in the sight of men. And everybody that tells you that the 70th week of Daniel is future is a liar, a damnable liar. He wants to take away your peace.
He wants to take away your salvation. He wants you to believe in a false Christ. He's preparing you for the greatest deception since the Garden of Eden. Walk away. Walk away. And if you can, run! Back to you, Yerk. Here, Paul is quite clear. Believing, quote-unquote, non-Jews were, quote, in time past Gentiles, aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, unquote. But, quote, now in Christ Jesus, unquote, Jews and Gentiles have become one. It is the truth. So let's come out of the fog. The wall came tumbling down at the cross. Paul was enraptured by this theme. He wrote a lot about it. In Ephesians chapter 3, verses 4 through 6, we read, Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge and the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of man, and it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 4 through 6. Here, Paul called this uniting of Jews and Gentiles into the same body, the mystery of Christ, which is now being revealed by the Spirit. This mystery is more important than any mystery movie you might ever watch on television. Again, Paul wrote in Galatians 3, verse 28, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. As pastors often say during marriage ceremonies, what God has joined together, let no man separate. This now applies to Jews and Gentiles. According to the New Testament, believing Jews and believing Gentiles are now one. The two combined are Abraham's seed, as we read in Galatians chapter 3, verse 29. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. This is now, quote, the Israel of God, unquote as we read in Galatians, chapter 6, verses 15 and 16, quote, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy and upon the Israel of God. Okay. This, yeah. you gotta, you, you got to ask the listeners the question. Okay. All together now, who is Israel? <laughs> don't, yeah, and, and, you have and, to go and back to the let, beginning of the playlist. <laughs> absolutely right. And don't let anybody escape the answering that question. Who is Israel? Now, there's you know, what does that do to your futurist interpretation of Bible prophecy that says, that there has to be a rebuilt temple, a new nation state of Israel with Jews living in the land and animal sacrifices. Is that Israel? Well, Are they is... in Christ Jesus when they make sacrifices in a rebuilt temple? That Think is... about what some of your pastors have been teaching you for decades and decades. It's wrong. It's a lie. You have to know that the Israel of God is of every tribe, every tongue, every nation, every kindred, every color, all bound together in the blood of Christ Jesus. Brethren, every single one, no matter what language they speak, both Jew and Gentile alike. They are all one in Christ Jesus. Now, everybody repeat after me. 
They are Israel. Those who are in Christ Jesus are the Israel of God. And there may be those who are called Israel, but they are not Israel because they're not washed in the blood of the Lamb. Whether they be Jew or Gentile. And let me tell you what uniquely identifies every one of those false Israelites. They make sacrifices. When the Israel of God makes no sacrifices. We, the Israel of God, are living sacrifices, holy and acceptable before the Lord because we believe God and we obey him. And our fruit bears witness of our heritage and our future. The same cannot be said for the vast, vast majority of those who call themselves Christians today. And if you want to blaspheme the name of Christ, just simply call them Christians. Because that's what you're doing. Blaspheming the name of Christ. I'm very, very careful who I call a Christian. Very careful. Something to think about. I no longer call myself a Gentile unless my tongue happens to slip. Bad habits are hard to break, but it's just a bad habit. It's not what I believe. I'm no more a Gentile than the man on the moon. I'm a Hebrew. I'm an Israelite. I have a Savior. His name is Jesus, and he redeemed me. He bought me, and I'm his and I'll be with him forever. Thank him for that. Back to you, Yerk. I want to read the slight blue sentence once again in the way that Steve Wahlberg intended it to be read. According to the New Testament, believing Jews and believing Gentiles are Israel. That's right. In totality, that's exactly what it should read, because that's exactly what he says. That's the if gist of the sentence that he didn't absolutely. write in those words. That's why I said I read it the way that he intended it to be read, to be right. understood. Are now one replaced by our Israel. Once again, according to the New Testament, and that is the proof of Jesus Christ fulfilling Daniel 70 weeks. There you go. Going yep. to the cross, making an end of sacrifice and oblations and sins and everything, and re installing the kingdom of God on this earth. According yep. to that New Testament, believing Jews and believing Gentiles are now Israel. Yep. That's the point that needs to be made. So be careful when you're reading the scripture, when it's talking about end times and it mentions Israel. Remember the new definition for Israel. Don't get stuck believing in the old definition of Israel or you'll become a futurist. Okay? That's where they got you. Yeah, I think that is one of the problems with many people who study the Bible in the Old Testament and want to transfer uh, many prophecies of mm -hmm. Israel in the Old Testament into the New Testament and they don't understand that mm -hmm. the Israel of the Old Testament was a nation state mm -hmm. and the Israel yeah. of the New Testament is believing Jews and Gentiles. The proper understanding is that that Israel that's on the eastern end of the Mediterranean is a physical deception of a spiritual reality. That spiritual reality, that real Israel, is you and me. 
the one on the eastern end of the Mediterranean. That which is called Israel is not Israel. That's uh, an Israel of the flesh. We are the Israel of the heart. Now we've come full circle. Do you comprehend now? Do you understand now what we're talking about? It's nothing to be called an Israelite unless you're circumcised of the heart. Then you are an Israelite. There are many in this world that call themselves Christians who are of the synagogue of Satan. There are many of this world that call themselves Israelites when they are of the synagogue of Satan. They are circumcised of the flesh by hands, but they are not circumcised of the heart. So don't put your eyes on that Israel on the eastern end of the Mediterranean, or you will be deceived. Know who Israel is. It's the redeemed. Jew, Gentile alike. They are no longer Jew. They are no longer Gentile. They are one in Christ Jesus. The true Israelite is of every kindred and nation and tongue and color and everything else. We're circumcised of the heart. What, a, what, what peace should come across the hearts of the listeners when they compromise, or when they comprehend, rather, <clears throat> the truth that God is trying to convey to his people in this book, in the Bible. And now you can see how the churches and the press and the governments of the world and the papacy are all deceived. All deceived. And not only and are who, they deceived, Tom, they deceive all the world. That's right. They deceive the whole world, the Bible says. It's like the like Jesus said to the Pharisees and the scribes when he said, not only do you close down, uh, not only do yourself not go to heaven, but you even close heaven for the ones who want to go in. That's right. That's, That's exactly, exactly right. What they, what they do. Yep. Uh, somebody asks you now, who are the modern day Pharisees? You can answer them the question with assurance. The Pharisees have never died. They're among us, and they're the loudest voices in the so-called, notice I said the so-called Christian world. Yeah, they never died to them. They just changed clothes. That's right. Same, same diabolical stuff, just a different millennium. According to the New Testament, believing Jews and believing Gentiles are Israel. Right. The two combined are Abraham's seed, as we can read in Galatians chapter 3, verse 29. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. This is now the Israel of God. Galatians chapter 6, verses 15 and 16 say just that. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision avails anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. This quote-unquote mystery has been accomplished through the cross. Now, yep. what does Steve Wahlberg here say in other words? This mystery has been accomplished through the fulfilling of Daniel's 70 weeks prophecy, Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 through 27. That's right. Jesus Christ did it all. When he died, he broke down the wall. Now think about it. Mm -hmm. Should Christians, and we should even put these in quotation marks, 
rebuild a wall that Jesus Christ died to abolish? Yet what about Paul's statement in Romans 11.26 that all Israel shall be saved? Now, that is interesting. Yeah. And I think that is something that we are going to say for next week's broadcast, Tom, because I think uh -huh. there is a lot to say and we yeah. leave the people a little bit hanging here with their own thoughts and with their own study in the meantime, and then we can go on to that next week. What do you say to that? I say let the Holy Spirit lead them into all truth until we meet again, and they'll be in the same page with us when we read the truth. That's what I expect. The Holy Spirit will convict and assure his saints of the true meaning of Israel, and uh, they will just reiterate what the Spirit teaches them this week. What peace. Mm -hmm.